Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In the past, I showed you how to test spark plugs using a digital multimeter with very high reliability, a method that I've used for at least 30 years. If you haven't seen it, a link to that video can be found at the end of this video. Even though the spark plug testing method shown in that video only takes a minute or two to do, some people would like a faster method with high reliability. So today I'll be showing you an inexpensive and very good spark plug tester that's a must have for DIY auto repair, small engine repair, jet skis, and much more. Some people posted comments in my previous spark plug testing video saying why bother testing the spark plugs when they're cheap enough just to replace them. And my answer to them has always been, not all spark plugs are cheap. Some can cost as much as $20 to $25 a piece. And why drive to a store, waste gas, spend money on something that you may not need. So it's always good to test your plugs before going out buying new ones. Now this spark plug tester is made by VX Scan. I purchased this with my own money. And it's designed to test one plug or you can do two plugs together. The purpose of testing two plugs together if you have a new plug, you could put it in one side and you can put your used plug in the opposite side and you can compare both plugs how they fire. You'll be able to change the RPM. It simulates the RPM of your engine. The plug fires faster and faster with higher RPM. And when it's down here at the bottom, it's going to be like your engine just a little faster than idling. You'll be able to tell very easily if the plug is good or bad. Now I've seen these testers being sold with different size holes. So the one you see here is a larger hole opening. And there are other ones that are much smaller. So if you purchase the smaller one, you're only going to be able to use a smaller insulator plug like you see here. This is from my Hyundai Sonata. So it fits fine in here and there's a lot of play. But that's okay because it still makes good contact between the tip and this part here. All right. See it locks against that metal ring on top? That's what you want. If you had a plug that had a larger insulator and you tried to insert it into the smaller hull of the other brands, you will not be able to test them. So you want to make sure you get the larger one you see here to be able to test both. The way this works, the AC adapter has a DC output going into this unit. The DC output through a circuit inside here, which you're going to see in a minute, creates pulses into two transformers. The low voltage pulses are converted into very high voltage pulses at the spark plugs. Let me connect this up and I'll give you a quick demonstration. With both spark plugs inserted into the tester to give you a very good close up of what's going on, I have a second camera right over here. I'm going to turn this on to the first position Now that's the lowest. And you can see the firing very clearly. And have some music in the process. That's maxed out. So we know that spark plug is working very well. And you can even smell some ozone doing this. It's also a very good idea when you test the plugs to place them in a toaster oven, maybe set for 300 degrees Fahrenheit for a few minutes. And then you want to place them very quickly into this unit using gloves. Turn it on, make sure it works fine. By doing that, you're going to help rule out any problems that the plug may have when it heats up. The tester does work and it works extremely well. Let me pop out this plug over here. When I played the video back of the sparking at the lowest setting, it appeared to show 9 or 10 pulses per second. So 9 times 60 is 540, 10 times 60 is 600. So right around 5 to 600 pulses per minute. And that would be for a two cycle engine. Two cycle engines, you have one pulse for every revolution of the engine. And a four cycle, you have one pulse for every two revolutions. To perform the test, I'll be using my Matco SmartTac Plus. Now I purchased this about 28 years ago 
and it still works great. It's a wireless tachometer and it also measures peak voltage for ignition pulses. So I'm going to turn this on. You can choose up to 12 different cylinders. We're going to leave it at number one. And here's an option for two cycle or four cycle. I'm going to leave it on two cycle. I'm going to extend the antenna just a little bit. I'm going to hold it here where you can see it. And let's see what's going on with the range of this thing. All right, so not bad. I counted nine or 10 pulses per second. The lowest setting we're getting around 600. Let's go here into the 2000 range. We're at 1800. All right, so now we're out of the 2000 range at 24, and we're only in the far end of the 2000 over here. Let's move a little higher. We're at 3000, and we're just nearing the beginning of 3000. Wow, look at that, how it jumped. So 6000 would be way over here, showing 6000 here. Let's go back. Yeah, it jumps from three to six. Let's see how high this goes. I think this only goes to 20,000. Yeah, you see it dropped after 19,000. So that's the limit. All right, so the low end you're looking at in the hundreds, but it's not accurate after around 3,000. It jumps. And for the low price of this tester, you really cannot expect high accuracy for the RPM settings. The last thing I want to do before I open this up, let's just take a look at the voltage output. This unit here is designed to hook over the spark plug wire, but if I position it like this, should be able to get a decent reading, so let's give it a try. Right there, you should see it. That's KV, so I saw peaks of around 15,700 volts. All right, let's pop this thing open. This is what it looks like inside. You have these three spring tabs that grab onto the tip when it's pushed in through this hole. And each one of these is a high voltage transformer with a ferrite core. So it's hard to see. You could probably see it in this image right here, but there's two windings. One is a thicker wire. That's your primary. The pulses from the circuit inside here on the other side of this board go into that winding that's thicker. If you look at the secondary winding, you're going to see it's many turns of a thin gauge enamel wire. It appears to be 38 to 42 gauge, and it's wound in a special way. It just doesn't go back and forth, back and forth, because if they did that, you would have arcing between the layers of wire. So what they did is they have dividers. You can see the white there, 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 and there. So they'll fill up this area first, move the wire over, fill up this area, fill up that area, and go to the opposite side. This way there's no overlapping layers where you're going to have a big differential in voltage. It's going to be gradual to the opposite side. If you just layer back and forth, then you have the higher voltage layer sitting on the layer underneath, and it's not going to do too well. And guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thanks for watching.